Hi, I'm Shandy of ExpressionFiberArts.com and I'm going to show you today how to spin yarn. It's way awesome. If you're a knitter or a crocheter or a weaver and you want to take your craft to the next level and just be way cool and way awesome, you have to try spinning. It's the coolest thing to be able to make yarn and then you take that yarn and make it into something else. It's mind-blowing. It's just so cool. You can do so many colors, so many options. You can do multiple plies. You can use a drop spindle or a wheel. Um, I use a wheel because it's so much faster and I like to get things done and be productive, but there's just so many options and it's it's so exciting, but it's also so meditative and centering and you just zone out the world. It's an escape is what it is. I love it. I think you'll love it too if you haven't tried it already. If you have, hopefully you'll learn something new in the video anyway. So I'm super excited to show you, so let's get started. Woo! I'm using my Lendrum Saxony 28 inch double treadle wheel today. I've got it out on the dock. The lake is beautiful. The sun is shining. I'm so excited to show you this. All right, so to get started, you wanna place your bobbin onto your flyer and screw on the whorl. Now each spinning wheel is going to be different, so you wanna follow the instructions you get on how to set yours up. I'll just show you how I do mine. You insert the flyer into your mother of all, and you can see here I'm popping on these strings one is going to go on the bobbin and one goes on the whorl. You want to also make sure, which I don't show you here, but you want to make sure that the bobbin spins freely inside the flyer. If the bobbin is not spinning freely inside the flyer, you're not going to have a pleasant experience. <laughs> the yarn just won't take up onto the bobbin. So go ahead and get some scrap yarn. This is some of my hand spun. Go ahead and double it, wrap it around your bobbin, and pull it through like so. If this isn't tight enough, you really want it to be very tight so that it does not slip around the bobbin. You can go ahead and wrap it around again. All right, so I've wrapped the scrap yarn through my hooks on the flyer, and I'm using a crochet hook here to pull it through the orifice since I lost my little special spinning wheel hook that you're supposed to use. All right, so we need to test first to make sure that our yarn is going to take up onto the bobbin properly. This is how I adjust mine. I need the yarn to pull on faster, so I'm tightening it up. So pull your yarn back out, see how it feeds in. How much does it twist? Is it easily going onto the bobbin? All right, I'm using some wool today. This is some long staple length wool. If I remember correctly, it was BFL, which is Blueface Lester. All right, there are several different ways to spin. One way is to go ahead and separate out a chunk like I did and pull, pull off a section. So once you've got your section, you can actually just start spinning right from the end if you want. Some people like to pre-draft, which is where you basically pull out little sections you're sort of getting it ready to spin you don't even have to do that step that's up to you another thing that you can do is to spin from the fold where you actually fold your roving in half you can also split the roving in half lengthwise and what I usually do is separate it in half lengthwise again So I'm going to show you how to spin from the end of that today. Eek. Okay, so grab your lead yarn and you want to lay your roving onto that. Start your wheel. I like to give it a little shove. And then let the roving twist onto that starter yarn. Now here's one method. This is called short draw. You pull little tiny snippets of roving forward. The right hand, if you've got a, a wheel that's set up like mine, your right hand just sits there, it doesn't do much. The left hand in this method is doing all of the work. See, I'm just holding, just holding the roving loosely, it's not really doing anything in my right hand. And my left hand is just inching 
the roving forward. Some people call this the inchworm method. So the whole purpose of a spinning wheel basically is to introduce twist into the roving and then pull that newly made yarn onto the bobbin. That's basically what's happening here. Seems like a big setup just to twist some wool, but it's awesome. Okay, another method is to pull back with the roving. Just pull back little snippets. Pull back, pull back. You want to just play around with different methods and whatever feels comfortable to you, just do that. Alright, so I'm going to show you a different method, which is what I normally do. This is great if you've got a fiber with a shorter staple length. It doesn't work quite so well with this wool that I'm using today. But if you have a fiber with short staple length, short to medium, you can do this method where you pull back a long strand and you can see I'm adjusting the amount of twist that goes into the roving with my left hand while pulling back a long stretch with my right hand. This allows for really speedy, easy spinning. It's really easy on the hands. Your wrists aren't going to get tired. If, if you're like me and you really fall in love with spinning, you will find that three or four hours can go by. I've even had seven hours go by and it just it feels like no time at all. And that can really put a lot of strain on your wrists and your hands, even your arms and your back if you're not doing it properly. So this method is really great for easing tension and stress on your, on your hands. All right, this is called the long draw method. And again, it doesn't work well with this long staple length wool I'm using, but you pull back Oh, you can even pull back like three feet. It's just up to you if you like to assist it by using your left hand to adjust the twist. It's Some people call that cheating, but that's what I do. So just play around with it. See what works for you. See which method you feel most comfortable with. As you start filling up your bobbin, you'll want to move your yarn to different hooks so that different parts of your bobbin fill up. It can be a little difficult at first. You might find your roving keeps breaking or you're just not getting the right amount of twist or it's super lumpy bumpy, but that's okay. My first skein of yarn that I spun was so bulky and bumpy and huge and crazy, but I made it and I knitted up a scarf with it and was so proud of it. I think I eventually got rid of it, but <laughs> it was fun. So I really encourage you just to get that first skein of yarn spun, whatever it looks like, it, it'll be beautiful. It's your first try. Don't expect it to be perfectly smooth your first go around. I really just like to be completely free with my spinning. If it's got lumps, if it's got bumps, that's okay. Because if I wanted perfect yarn, I would just go buy commercially spun yarn. That's my theory. All right, so if your roving breaks, don't freak out, the end of the world is not here. I know it's scary, ah! But as you can see, oh my gosh, where'd it go? I just fixed it. So again, ah, your roving breaks, ah! Just lay it back on and keep going. I know it seems almost too simple, but that is all you do. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's totally okay. So you just keep going, keep pulling back your roving, allow the twist to feed in, and just enjoy yourself. Really, it's that simple. You can see my little feetsies are going. That's what's driving the wheel. I just encourage you to have fun with it, relax, and just try it. Time for bloopers. Hi, I'm Shandy of ExpressionFiberArts.com. And <clears throat> so I'm super excited to show you. Let's get right on it. Woo! 
Thanks so much for joining me. Please head on over to my blog and my website so you can sign up for my newsletter and make sure you don't miss out on any of my important updates. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.